Hey folks, dude here, coming at you on, of all things, November 20th, Friday, November 20th, and, um, well, it's kind of one of those things. You guys have seen it a bazillion times on YouTube. Some survival guy basically expresses something along the lines of, you know, having the stuff handy to help you survive. Now, obviously, having stuff like, um, mm, no, no, not, no, no, wrong, wrong stuff, wrong stuff, okay. <sighs> don't, no, okay, you can do that one too to survive, but it's, no, um, no, 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 not gonna get into that. I'm talking about, of all things, having some very simple items at your disposal. 91% alcohol, besides its primary purpose of utilization for, like, cleansing areas, for medical purposes, or preparation for injections, has its secondary uses in terms of survival. Obviously, so does grade A ass wipe has its secondary purposes. You wish to utilize a steel can. Well, if you're surviving, you're gonna have plenty of steel cans. You take this guy, you pop out the little guy in the middle. If you have those versions that don't have the cardboard tube, you're also set. Basically, take this guy, kinda, you know, like C fold it, drop it down in here, apply a whole bunch of this, light it up, pull up a streamer if you wanna basically have something easier light. You have got a heater. Now, of all those things you wanna make sure that you do utilize, it has to be a steel can, okay? These plastic coffee cans will basically just melt out and make a hell of a mess, and it's not going to do anything good for you. You have to use a steel, read like, steel can. It's got to be steel. Now, secondarily, you're thinking along the lines of how to protect those things that are now getting really smoking hot. And the thing is, alcohol is not a very hot fire. It's actually the coldest fire known to science, short of pretty much just blowing cold air into the stream of flame to try to cool it off. Alcohol is not a very hot flame. As a matter of fact, I actually talked to a guy who ran out alcohol-fed dragster and, you know, ran on E85 or whatever that's, you know, the, the, the alcohol fuel. So ran on full-on alcohol for his dragger. And I was like, well, you have any problems running straight alcohol? He goes, actually, yes, I do actually have one. I've actually had to put bleed holes to make it run lean, to warm the engine up, because if I don't, it, it goes down to track, you know, freezing temperatures, and it just doesn't make as much power. I got to get the engine to warm up, so I have to run a little lean. Now, along the lines of what this stuff actually does on its secondary purposes is burning it in an enclosed area. It doesn't make very bad gases for you to be exposed to. It, you know, it uses some oxygen up and makes some carbon dioxide. Of course, you might have a slight smell of the alcohol burning, but it's not nearly as harmful as burning, like, Natural gas, burning instead propane, burning gasoline, burning any other petrochemicals in an enclosed area, <clears throat> alcohol is way safer. Now, you're thinking to yourself, okay, I got this thing down flaming, getting hot, and all. of course, you want to take the wrapper off first. It's just going to it's gonna smolder and get stinky and all the rest of that good stuff. You want to take as much off the outside with the glue if you could scrape it off. How do you protect that which you're going to put in this flaming torch of you know heat source and some light? Not a lot of light, but some light. You would probably want to put it on a plate. And I do mean like an actual ceramic plate. Now, if you want to take it one step further than that, you can give it some airspace. Put it on a rack. Now, make sure it's stable. These things are not the most stable of all things. You have a little bit of a bounce factor at all. But if you think about it, by looking at the engineering side of things, you have airspace with which to air to circulate to not allow this thing to put direct heat to an area in excess. Now, a plate will get warm, okay? But it's not going to get as warm as if the sheer hot thing was touching something else, transmitting that heat down to actually your counters or wherever that thing is being placed upon to cook something important or cause mayhem or damage therein and what have you. And also the other thing, too, is also if it falls over, you have something to catch the alcohol. Of course, it's going to go, you know, you're going to be like, oh, crap, now what? Well, I would say probably at that point, you just simply just get like a big pot, flip it over, put the whole thing out, let it, you know, basically extinguish itself by just simply just running out of oxygen. Not, not, a, not a thing of huge rocket science, basically just slip it off, basically now have this pool of burning fluid, just basically put a pot on upside down, snuff it out. Make sure the pot actually does fit over the plate. Now, of all these things that you're doing in terms of just thinking outside the box, you're using things that you already have handy. Um, no. You're using those things you already have handy. And also, the other thing, too, is you're not really using stuff that's going to be that bad in an enclosed atmosphere, and it can save your bacon. So it's just another way of thinking outside the box to basically utilize those things you're going to have already 
and you're using them to a secondary purpose, which is never a bad thing. I'm going to break up with this one, folks. Eat good, keep it tight, ring. As always, always, you know it, you love it. Um, Victoria's Secret Catalog in a bad snowstorm. Home entertainment system. Uh, no, no, no. Just use, use this other stuff to survive it, okay? I'm going to break up with this one, folks. Eat good, keep it tight, ring. As always, always, you know it, you love it. I'm being silly. See you guys. Arsh!